Black lights and booze burn when I record for watch and every black like Troy Davis who never had a fair shot. Welcome to Left of Black. I'm your host, Mark Anthony Neal, and we are joined today by Fonte Coleman. Fon Tigolo, how are you doing, yo, sir? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm glad to finally get this, you on the show. Yo, man, I'm like, this is like the biggest like profile interview I've done. Like, I, like all the other interviews I do are like, like rap websites. Right. Like, I, I'm sitting talking to someone with a degree. <laughs> That's amazing. This is, thank my mother would be proud of this. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> You got a new recording, No News is Good News. Yes. Um, and there's a couple of things that come to mind. Folks are like, this is first album in seven years. It's like, but it ain't like you ain't been working. Exactly. Um, between Foreign Exchange and that slept on joint that you did with Eric Robeson oh, last night, yeah, which, was, which, which was just fire. Thank you. Been doing a little bit of TV. Yeah. You've been doing some major podcasting. Um, you've been working. <laughs> I'm always working, man. <laughs> I'm always working. I just learned that, you know, in, in, in entertainment, a lot of times if you're not doing what people know you for, mm -hmm. then they just lose track of you altogether. There's very few people in the, over the course of your career that will follow everything you do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you think of, like, you know, McDonald's or whatever, if McDonald's is like, yo, we going to start making pizza or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to... Y'all make burgers. We just know y'all for that. And they can make fire pizza, but we know y'all for that. So we're only sticking with that. Yeah. So in the course of your career, you know, as many times if, as I have shifted and have pivoted from just one thing to another, um, it's almost kind of like I get, I keep getting extra lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's fun to me. Like, there's still people that put together that Fonte is the same Fonte from Little Brother, Foreign Exchange, Tigolero. Like, there's people still figuring that out in 2018. So my thinking is, the longer I can delay them figuring it out, <laughs> the bigger my check will be at the end when they do figure it out. <laughs> but, but it does beg the question, right? Um, what was it that you had to say with this? Because uh, you didn't seem like you were in a hurry to do a follow-up. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I never wanted to do solo records, man. Ever. Ever. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. Like, I never, man, like, it's like people, they think, like, you know, like, you just want to be Beyonce. Yo, it's hard being Beyonce. Yeah, it's yeah, hard being Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's tough be, to be Beyonce. Like, it's the, the Bay Hive and having the, the production and it's all about you, dude. I never wanted that. Let never. me tell you, though, when, when I'm listening to this, and I, and I got to tell you, I listen to So Help Me God, like, Thank three you. times a day. Oh, that, wow. That, that, for <laughs> me, is like that, that kind of old school New York joint that, that I love. Straight ahead. But I'm listening to this album, right? And, you know, we're in this moment now where, where cats are, like, not afraid to grow up in their recordings. You know, whether we're talking about Jay and 444 mm -hmm. and the way Farrell's been just talking about the stuff he's been going through. We had Mercer on a little bit, and yeah, he's done with cool. all that kind of stuff. And I'm listening to this album, and, you know, you're talking about sleep apnea <laughs> <laughs> and CPAP machines, right? <laughs> Which I don't have. To be clear, I don't have it. all the songs, all the diseases I listed in expensive jeans. I don't have any of them. I've been taking better care of myself. I've been like losing weight and everything. So I'm cool. But but that's real talk, right? Oh, it's oh, real yeah, talk absolutely. to talk about, you know, what folks are kind of dealing with in these days. And then you're also dealing with the loss of your dad. Yeah. Right. Um, so this is like some real life shit. Yeah, this. man. I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, and I, I've said this before, I think like we're the first generation to figure out what hip hop will look like as it gets older. I yeah. think for a long time, like mm -hmm. hip hop was like that kid that didn't think it would live past 21 and now it's 40 and it's like oh hell what do i do you know i mean it was so long so much of it is a youth driven culture and it still is a youth driven culture but you know jay-z is you know almost 50. Yeah, almost 50 you know 50. what i'm saying yeah. dr dre is almost 50. like the most the most of the rappers that you're seeing now uh outside of just the younger kids i mean you look at cats like two chains or whatever like this guy's in their 40s you know what i mean and so um this is just the first time that I think hip hop is having its midlife crisis and trying to figure <laughs> out where to go. Like, do I just shut down or do I buy the convertible and start fucking my secretary? Where? Like, <laughs> they don't know. We, it's kind of lost right now. So I'm more so just to grow old gracefully person. Like, I don't, I don't really like convertibles. You know, I, I want to keep my home, so I'm not fucking the secretary. But uh, that to me is, my album to me is what growing older feels like to me. And you know what's important about it, there's now an audience for that, right? So, so now exactly. you got 50 year old, 60 year old cats 
who ain't trying to mess with Migos. Like they might mess with a little stir fry every once yeah, in a while, yeah. right? But for the most part, you know, they want to listen to music that captures where they are. And now we got artists who are still in the game. Yeah. Right. You know, who are willing to talk about that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, again, it's still, I mean, I'm still figuring it out. You know what I'm saying? Like a good buddy of mine, Royce, uh, the Five Nine. Yeah. Like that's my man. Who who did a brilliant, his last album dealt with all that. Everything. (laughs) All that's right. Big ups to him, man. Him and Primo, they just put out Prime too. And me and him, like we have these kind of conversations of just like, when you first start out in the game as an MC and you have that first big struggle or you have that first big hurdle, uh, no one ever tells you that that's just the beginning. Like you don't ever think it, think of it as going so long. And I remember doing the minstrel show and when, you know, with little brother and I remember we did the minstrel show when it came out. I mean, that's 13 years ago. 13 years years ago. ago. And I just wish someone would have been there to tell me, that that was the beginning and not the end. Mm. Because we felt like, you know, at least I did, like, oh man, it's over, like this, that. But that's just the start of a yeah. long, long journey. It, the funny part is like, um, you know, cause you and Ninth went through your shit, you know, that, that's yeah, yeah. old news now. And I remember talking to him about it a couple of years ago. Um, and one of the things I think hit him, he happened to be in a different space in his life cycle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as stuff begin to fray, right? So, so, so he's thinking about those kids, right? Yeah, yeah. Now you're in a part now where you're, you know, dealing with fatherhood and it's just a shit like that that just changes Dude. what those relationships so, look like. It's so funny. So me and I, we were talking the other day. Actually, we, I, we were on the phone for a minute the other day. And so it's just so funny the way we've changed our, our perspectives and how we've changed over the years. <laughs> Cause like now he's the guy that's like out on tour. He's touring with rap. Cause his kid, cause his kid's older. Yeah, right, right. Older, kids you know older. He's like out. He's on tour with rap. I look up. He's in London and all this stuff. And I'm the dude that's at home. Right. I don't give a fuck about no tour. I don't want to go. I'm on the tour. I'm on the home tour. You catch me in my living room. You catch me in my in my in my attic. You can catch me outside on my deck eating oatmeal because I eat oatmeal now because that's what old niggas got to do. <laughs> You can catch me, listen, you catch me at Home Depot, you know what I'm saying, picking out some nice uh, backsplash tiles. You know what I mean? That, that's what I'm into these days, bro. I'm not like the rap tour. I ain't really into that. Because even the technology piece, right? You know, so, you know, cats hear you with Questlove on this podcast. Yeah. And they might be thinking that you sitting up there up in New York all that time and, and you might, in fact, be on your deck on the phone. Well, yeah. Well, so, well, so Questlove Supreme, actually, we do take that live. Okay. We okay. Take live. So I'm back and forth to New York. At least three, four times a month. Okay. Like I, I damn near should need to get an apartment in New York. So I'm back and forth to New York doing that. And then um, also I do, um, I, I came on with William Morris recently for uh, the, in their voiceover department. <laughs> and so I'm doing voices for like commercials and stuff like that. And that's stuff I do from home. And so, you know, man, I, I just work and I just try to create my life in a place that I only have to work with people that, I really enjoy working with. Yeah, to me, yeah, that's yeah. what success yeah, is. Yeah. Like, it's no. What's the use? What's the use in being successful or making money, or whatever? If you got to work with assholes. Right. So I am blessed enough to be in a space where I can make music I want to make. I can, you know, say what I want to say, and there's an audience that supports it. And I can really just take the time to work with projects that I like and right. work with people that I enjoy working with. I mean, one of the things I think is interesting about where your career is now, when you talk to these young cats, and, and all, they all want to be rappers. Right, or they want to be producers. And we're starting to see there's so many other ways in which you can be in the industry without having to be the talent in that way. I mean, you mentioned the voiceover piece, right? I mean, that's just so, like so natural. Right? That's like, so when you're 22 years, you're not thinking about, yeah, I want to do voiceover. No, work. you're not thinking, no, because you're not thinking like in 20 years, it's like, okay, do I want to be at my house, like working on something? Or do I want to be checking into a Holiday Inn Express? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like seriously, that's, dude. That's it's real like, talk. Yo, I, that's, that's real and talk. And that's just something that, again, it comes with time. It, co- it comes with time. And um, I just tell uh, young artists all the time, use every tool in your toolbox because you never know which one is going to knock down the wall. You never know what your thing may be. You may start out as rapping and you may go into art or you may go into singing or you may go into dance. Just you really have to leave every possibility open yeah. because you never know which one is going to yeah. be. Have you been surprised by the success and the longevity that you and Nicolay have had? Uh, well, I think in 2018, anyone that still has an audience 
<laughs> should be very surprised. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I think anyone that, that still has an audience in the midst of, you know. Everything that's right. Yeah, right. 600, you know, channels on cable and Hulu and Netflix and mm -hmm. all of that, uh, I think they should be surprised. So with me and Nick, man, we just, again, these are conversations we have, like, mm -hmm. on the daily where we're both just happy to just still be in a space where we're able to just do what we love, get it to the people that want it, <laughs> and then just live our lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's uh, we we never take any of that for granted. You're watching Left to Black. I'm your host, Mark Anthony Neal. We're here in the John Hope Franklin Center here at Duke University. We're joined by Fonte Coleman talking about his new album, his new CD, No News is Good News. Yes. So, it, my people tell me that that me and Eric Robertson are kin. I can believe it. <laughs> I, I think he's like, he has people from North Carolina. Uh, hey, yeah. So I ain't never met the dude before. <laughs> um, but I've been a fan for more than a minute. I mean, it's, it, you know, you're talking about almost 20 years in yeah. terms of his career. And one of the things I always appreciated was that he was cool with not doing the major label thing. Yeah. Right. You know, he's basically been indie his whole career. And so I'm like, wait a minute. Fonte and Eric Robeson got a got a project together. How did that come about? Man, about? Eric Robeson, man, Errol, that's big bro, man. Like that's my big brother. That is the he is the cat that really laid the groundwork for what we know as independent R and B. He's mm -hmm, one of the mm -hmm. one of the uh, the hallmarks, one of the artists of that. And so for me, me and him, we met like in two thousand six. Uh, we were doing an LB show in Jersey, and he came out to the show. And afterwards, he was just like, yo, I got this joint. I want you on. I was at my house. He was living in Jersey at the time. I said, well, let's ride. So we went, and the first record we did was Been In Love. And so we did that record. And from that point on, man, it just became a brotherhood. Like, anything he needed me on, I would do, um, and vice versa. Like, for mm -hmm. the record he's on for, for uh, No News Good News, Find That Love Again, it was literally I called him, like, yo, I need you for this hook. I send you the reference, and he's like, all right, well, let me put my kids to bed, and I got you. <laughs> That's been our relationship, you know, from day one. And so with me and him, you know, we, we talk often about just about the, uh, the relationship with major labels and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing is, I just tell people all the time, you know, artists and everybody, you just, if you have the ability, if you have the chance to sign with the major label, um, I almost would say I would recommend it if for no other reason than to demystify it. Okay. You know what I mean? Because what you think is going to be in your head versus <laughs> what it actually, actually is, is right. it's two different things. And it's not like just the oh, all oh, labels are evil. Or, right. It's not like that at all. I mean, I don't think that one size fits all. But I do think that if you're not making like super poppy records or if you're not, you know, uh, if you, if you don't make music that appeals to a very broad demographic. You, if you want to have some freedom. Yeah, right, if you want to have some freedom, yeah, right. that probably won't be you. But, you know what I'm saying, I, uh, me, and, me and Arrow, we both had that experience of signing with a label and just, you know, kind of having your cherry pop and seeing what it is. <laughs> and then being like, you know what, I'm good. Let me just stick to the rivers and the lakes that I'm used to. <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> One of the things I appreciated with the last foreign exchange album, um, you had my homegirl, Shauna Tucker. Oh, man, Shauna's uh, family. And it's yeah. like, you know, for her, you know, with the great work that she's been doing, playing her little soul cello, um, yeah. to be able to give her access to a whole other audience, right? I mean, I mean, that said something to me about what you, Nick, have been doing and how you've been trying to really open up the space for folks who are doing great work. Absolutely, man. Yeah, Shauna Tucker, I mean, she's somebody that, Again, I mean, how many sisters you know can play cello, cello and right. sing? And, you know what I mean? So, yeah, she's... And, and, and be fine, too, but that's a whole other conversation. Well. Right? <laughs> and be fine. Yeah, Shana Tucker, man, she is like, she's like, God, man, that's family. She, um, we started working together first in 2014. It was uh, 13, I want to say. That was when we did uh, the song Better with Arrow. Right. So that was like a true kind of uh, family affair. But, uh, yeah, her, um, she's someone that I just love to death and just love her talent and music. Um, also, Tamisha Wade, who's another local singer mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. who me and her go back 20 years to North Carolina Central. Um, man, I'm just trying to think, it's just so many. What we try to do is just try to open up our universe. And I look at it from the standpoint of, me and Nick look at it kind of like George Clinton and uh -huh. B-Funk, where he would have Parliament. And then he would have Funkadelic. Right. But then he had Parlay. And, and Bronze Frank. Bronze Frank is right. Boosie's right. Rubber Band. Right, right. And it was pretty much just one group of people that were just making 
all this music. But creating all these brands. And creating all these brands, brands and putting right. them out. So Foreign Exchange is a brand. Zoe is a brand. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nicolay, his solo thing is a brand. But it's the, all the same people that are working and contributing to it. And so my thing is I don't really feel like it's worth it. I don't feel like I've done my job as a musician if I haven't led other people to a similar creative force yeah. that feeds me. You know what I'm saying? When people want to know who I'm listening to, I put them on my records. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm listening to. I'm listening to Shauna Tucker. I'm listening to Gwen Bunn. I'm listening to, I mean, Joy. I'm, you know, all the, just the many artists I yeah. work with. That's who I like. So when are we going to get the Netflix series starring Fonte Coleman as a retired rapper? Yo, because it just seems listen, to me like it would be so damn natural. Listen, man, yo, it's funny you say that. It's funny you say that. It's there's, there's a bit of you, 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 you. It's funny you say that. So I actually have um, something in the works that's like super, super early, super premature. I mean, this is TV, so it's like. They could give you a series order and then call you like, <laughs> right, five right, minutes right, and be like, right. nah, and it'll be over. But um, I actually am kind of working on something in that realm. Uh, I have some TV and stuff going on. It's, for me, man, I'm trying to find the right thing for mm. me. And I've learned just in the time of just working with voiceover and working with whatever, you just have to find your lane. You have to find like what your thing is. And in talking to actors and in talking to just people who work in the business, you know how you'll see, like, you'll think of certain actors and you just know that's what they are. Like, you know, Denzel, you know, his thing is kind of like, you know, you know his thing. And then there's Samuel Jackson. He's like the Holloman thing. Right. And then, you know what I mean? It's like everyone has their thing. So I'm still in the process of trying to figure out what, what that your is. Thing. What yeah. that is. And, um, but I have something on the table that it, I think it could be that thing. So we'll see. So nobody will talk about which one of their kids they like the most. Okay. Right. I will. Right. <laughs> I, I, I will. I will. I, I don't care. But but which one of these tracks you like the most? Oh, which one of the tracks I like the most? I would probably say if I just had to pick one, gun to the head, picking one. Um, I would say probably expensive jeans. And, and talk about that, right? Because I mean, you really do kind of like a mini DNA genomics conversation. <laughs> you know, almost with a laugh track, like in like two minutes. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and that's the thing. It's short. So right. so the thing with expensive jeans. So there's a song <coughs> on. Uh, Tribe Called Quest, Beats, Rhymes, and Life album called Crew. And it's like, it's on side one. I'm really dating myself, but it's uh, it's like a song. It's on like a, like a minute and a half, right. minute 40. But it's a story about like Q-Tip is out and he sees. Oh, in the car, right, yeah, right, right in the car, he right. the girl, somebody kissing his woman <laughs> and, and, and then And, he, and, and he drunk, correct. Right? All that, right. <laughs> so with Crew, you know, that was just a song that I was like, man, like I really like that. So with Expensive Jeans, um, my man DJ Harrison, he, he's a keyboard player, drummer, mm-hmm. the whole nine. And he had a sample, uh, a, a piece he had made, um, and I sent it to my man Knotts. And I was yeah. like, yo, Knotts, I think you can flip you do this. Something like, do something with this, right. He hit me back in like an hour and was like, yo, this is it. I'm like, yeah, that's it. So the idea was that I wanted to make something that sounded kind of eerie and something that sounded kind of unsettling. And so I knew I had something with that record. When I, would, when I first had the first sequence of songs done, and I would have people that, that were working on the record, I would play them, mm-hmm. play it for them. First two songs, like they nodding. First three songs, they nodding, nodding, nodding. Every time Expensive Jeans came on, they would stop. Stop. And I knew, I, I was like, I had something. So then when it was over, they'd be telling me, like, yo, I, I was dri- I was driving in the car on 15501, <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was that. And so those are just those moments as a writer. To, to really, to literally make someone stop in their tracks. Yeah. I mean, that's magic, man. Like, you don't, that's, those moments only come, you know, yeah. once, a couple times in a lifetime. So that would be my favorite one, I would say. Because it's so short. And it's, I, I love, like, if it was up to me, like, there would be no song in the world past two and a half minutes. Like, there would be nothing. <laughs> I, I, I really just like those like, quick directions. Like, like it's Motown again. Yo, it's, back yo, to Motown up, there, I'm very If you want to buy a sandwich or this jam, which would you buy? Yeah, yeah, so for me, it's the idea of getting something, expressing a, a whole idea and telling a whole story in, like, two minutes or less. Like, that's the ultimate yeah. challenge for me as a songwriter. Like, how do you do that? Three years ago, um, you came through Duke Performances and performed out in Duke Garden oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, with Rhapsody. Um, and this is coming right off of her you know, 
Kendrick piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you been surprised by her success? Not at all. Not at all. It's, I mean, it's not just knowing her and knowing her drive and knowing mm -hmm. just seeing the work that she put in. I mean, this is something that, you know, if, if anything, there's, if there's anything to be learned from her story, I just tell people all the time, like, there is, you know, the old saying, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. I mean, <laughs> that's, she's that's been real. at it that's real for, talk. Like, for a, while. a long time. I right. mean, at the time when we were touring, when, uh, when I was touring for Cherry, my first old album, I mean, that was, it was me and Ninth, and she was with us, and that was 2011. Right. And so, from 2011, and she had already been putting in maybe like a year or two. And she'd been dropping in, just dropping mixtapes, right? Yeah, just doing right. mixtapes. So right, and the Cooley really High like, stuff even before that, right. Dude, so if you're looking at a person's journey and you're seeing her now, and you're seeing like Layla's Wisdom all over everywhere, and you're seeing, you know, the Grammy nomination, you're seeing all that, understand that that has been years, like almost yeah. a full decade in the making. And um, that to me is something that more than anything else, I just think is to be commended because people have no idea once you get into this business how long it takes to really yeah. see some daylight you okay. know what i mean you i mean you 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 have no idea so to see her do what she's doing and to see her you know get the grammy nod and be with kendra whatever i mean it doesn't surprise me at all because the work ethic is there yeah. um the talent is there and it just she just keeps showing up and right. that's 90 percent right. of the game you got to show up right if you can show up and deliver then you're good where can people keep in contact with Fonte? Oh, man, you can catch me on Instagram uh, at Fontigolo. You can catch me on Twitter at Fontigolo. <laughs> you can catch me at uh, foreignexchangemusic.com. Uh, that's kind of like the home site for everything. Uh, but those two places, pretty much Instagram and, and uh, Twitter, those are my two hangouts. I don't get too... I try not to get sucked into the social media vortex too much. <laughs> but uh, you catch me there. You catch me at Home Depot in the tile aisle. Uh, looking at backsplashes, um, catch me watching HGTV. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Looking for new bathroom ideas. You know what I mean? I, hey man, you know I'm I'm just enjoying my life. Mark Anthony Deal, this is Left to Black. We've been joined by Fonte Coleman. Man, thanks a lot for joining us. Oh man, us, thank man. you. This is a okay. pleasure. And yo, I'm gonna holler at Arrow. We are gonna get him. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Him okay. Right. We can do that. That'd be great. That'd be, sure. I'd love that. Black lights and booze burn when I record for Watts And every black like Troy Davis who never had a fair shot All black everything, everything black Culture over everything, y'all We take 